<laughs> Where were you on the night of the 13th? <laughs> English. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm ex Detective Sarah Christ. <laughs> you likely know me from my work hunting down the Creekside Killer. <laughs> but. <laughs> You might also know me from my picture hanging up at O'Malley's Tavern. <laughs> I have the record time on the mechanical bull. I don't have much time to talk. I double parked my car on a playground. Uh, so. <laughs> I'm here because I have a confession to make. I've been tracking down Amanda's whereabouts for the better half of a year now. Okay, so now listen. I am no stranger to stalking people in the night, but this time it was personal. Amanda Lehan Canto murdered my ex-partner by hugging them too hard after a group Pilates class. <laughs> <laughs> she hugs with such aggression, it is f***ing disgusting. The sheer force of the hug crushed their spine like a can of Diet Coke. I only wish I could have been there to save my partner, but they don't allow smoking and Pilates. <laughs> <laughs> she was a true master of disguise, constantly personifying different wigged maidens with smooth caramel voices. <laughs> <laughs> there was only one time I saw her in her natural form, in an ill-fitted target dress and a four-year-old's bangs. <laughs> I had to get closer. I enrolled in one of her improv classes at the local community center. She taught us how to be as loud as possible and leave no room for others to contribute. <laughs> I wasn't cut out for improv because I kept questioning the truth. <laughs> as I continued to observe her, the unthinkable happened. I got too deep. Before I knew it, I, Sir Christ, had fallen deeply in love with Amanda Lehan Canto. I suddenly realized we were meant to be. Her last name is Lehan Canto, and I had to leave Encanto because I kept telling the children to quiet down. <laughs> Do you all know Encanto? The movie about a magic house. <laughs> There's only one magic house I am aware of, and that is the courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> and look, I'm not just in love with her spirit, but also her body. She's built like a substitute teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say I wasn't a wet cop until I met Amanda. <laughs> I learned that Amanda loves drinking skin contact wine. God, if I could make contact with her skin, I would never whine. <laughs> they say the Creekside Killer is still at large. And you know what else is large? Her breasts. Yep. <laughs> so while I want to leave all of you with the promise, I will find her killer. I will hunt night and day to figure out who did this. If you need me, I will be at O'Malley's Tavern, riding the mechanical bull. Sayonara. That's it. Excuse us. Oh, thank you. No. Oh. Zip. Zap. Zop. Zip. Zap. Zap. <laughs> Pass the oink, 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 oink. Hey, Fred Schneider, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I'm going down to Publix to get some chicken. Zip. Zap. Zop. Zip. Zap. Oink, 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 hey, oink, 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 Fred Schneider, what are you doing? <laughs> I, got I got your back. back. We, got we got your, your back. back. <laughs> hey, you guys, how we doing? Hey, guys! How we doing? Oh, oh, that's so fun. Oh, oh, what's up, guys? You guys all know me, I'm Hunter. And I'm Esme. And together we are Skunk, Skunk Police. <laughs> Your favorite improv team from North Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Stop, stop, okay, settle down, settle down. We gotta show you guys. We are 
one of the most premier improv teams in the world. And Amanda has been our coach since we got together. Three months ago. <sighs> and we will miss her so dearly. Because she, she taught us everything we know. Every thing about comedy. You may say she's our Lucy Ball. Our okay. Joey Deschanel. <laughs> our, our Victoria, Victoria Justice. Justice. Yeah! <laughs> In honor of Amanda, we have compiled a list of rules. We call them the, the Ten, Ten Amandaments. Amandaments. And with these ten amendments, you can achieve god tier level comedian. We will share them with you now today in her honor. Number, Number one. one! If you don't have something funny to say, just say some nonsense and repeat it over and over like a catchphrase. Like what? <laughs> Me thinks nopesy. Say it again. Me thinks nopesy. Nice! <laughs> <laughs> Number two. two! As an improviser, you must always be on time. So wear a watch to remind people that you were a part of the Groundlings Improv Theater. So you can remind them every hour. You were a part of the Groundlings Improv Theater. Every day, every hour. <laughs> Number three! <laughs> Having trouble creating a character's voice? Just start with something that's hard to listen to and then gradually make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> Number four! If you're in a video and you're playing a game and the game is super confusing, do not worry about following along with the rules. Damien will explain it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, <laughs> life hack, schedule your callback. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Number five, <laughs> life hack, schedule your callback for the middle of a shoot day. You get a full day's pay for half a day's work. Oh my god, what a hack! <laughs> or flip it, and you can come whenever you want, like Noah, or Olivia, or Keith. <laughs> If you have nothing to build a character off of, make them Irish! <laughs> <laughs> Number, Number seven. seven! Social media rule. Aspect ratios are a suggestion. <laughs> and if you don't have new content, just post one of those filters that tells you whatever blank you are. People love it! They're so funny! They're so funny! <laughs> Number, Number eight. eight! This is just something she told us to do in our free time. Uh, flick your bean to pictures of wigs. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine! Dress to impress at improv shows, and you'll impress them when you're wearing every color at once. Clashing's not a thing! <laughs> <laughs> Number ten! Sitting in awkward silence, now's the time to bring up that you are part of the Groundlings Improv Theater! <laughs> in honor of Amanda, we are gonna show you these rules in practice oh with an improv scene. All we need is a one word suggestion of anything at all. Juice. I, I heard, heard Amanda. Amanda. Thank you. <laughs> Can we get a location? Hospital. The moon. I heard Boston. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Dunkin' Donuts, it's, it's Starbucks, to Boston. Ooh. Do you think you can get me some sugar? <laughs> <laughs> me think Snopesy! <laughs> well, do you think you can get me some lemons? Me think Snopesy! <laughs> well, what can you get me? Gravely Zebra Theater! <laughs> scene! Thank you guys! If you like what you saw, we have a show tomorrow night. It's under at Chipotle! At 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What? It's just that this loss is really hard for me. <laughs> Shut up. Um, my name is Hepther. Um, that is Heather with a P in the middle. <laughs> and I was uh, one of Amanda's bridesmaids for her wedding. I'm sure a lot of you were thinking, oh my God, Hepther. <laughs> Which I don't know why that's funny, it's just my name. Um, oh my god, Hepther, what an amazing dress. I want to f have sex with you. Oh. <laughs> uh, Amanda's death is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> so what? I hope she thinks about that for one second. <laughs> I had so much riding on this. 
and then ah, it's gone. <laughs> I was going to have sex with a DJ wearing a beret. <laughs> I don't know why we didn't have a backup bride in case something like this happened. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I was looking forward to her wedding for months. I took six weeks off of work, even though it's local. <laughs> and I know you're thinking, Hepther, why would you do that? It's local. Um, I needed a minute. <laughs> and now I'm literally fired. I hired a separate wedding photographer to take photos of just me um, because I don't have any photos for grid. <laughs> I don't have any photos for grid. <laughs> and now I'm at a funeral and I can't slide to the left, slide to the right. <laughs> Think back now, y'all. I can't crisscross. I can't crisscross. <laughs> Everybody, you can't do that here. <laughs> I've been practicing how I was gonna laugh at the wedding speeches. Nah! <laughs> the wedding is canceled, and now what do I do? I just have a dumb gravy dish that she wanted. Like, why did she even want a gravy dish? What is this, the Oregon Trail? <laughs> <laughs> I can tell we've all been affected by the loss of Amanda's wedding. Um, because you all have cl such clear roles um, as the type of people you would be at the wedding. Chance, uh, you're the guy who does a death drop during the father-daughter dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Sorry, it's in writing. <laughs> it's Angela, you get too drunk and pummel a girl to the ground to catch the bouquet. <laughs> yeah. Shane. You stand with all the cool uncles smoking Cuban cigars and drinking Pops Blue Ribbons on the bleachers, even though you're not allowed near high school. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, you dance in the corner for most of the wedding, but not when Blink comes on. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, you order a complex drink like a Boulevardier from the bartender and tell everyone that weddings are never easy for you. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Olivia, um, you of course will be placed at the kids' table, even though there's plenty of seats for the adults. <laughs> and in fact, they asked you to sit there, but you said no. <laughs> anyway, uh, in Amanda's honor, I wanted to give the speech I was going to give, um, even though I was expressly asked not to give a speech. Um, but here we go. All right. <clears throat> wow. Look at us. <laughs> Amanda, you love yellow and the number seven. You found a husband, and I just had cool sex with a DJ in the bathroom. <laughs> Ever since we met in Song, you know, I knew we were destined to be friends. And let me just say, the vegan mimosas were excellent, and the virgin stuffed peppers were scrumptious. So cheers to the happy bride. R.I.P. Amanda. <laughs> and I am going to be um, sending your fiance an invoice for the dress. Love you and leave you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I regret ever so much. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. I, I have legs. <laughs> I do want to take this time to address um, a serious issue. I'm Lisa and Olivia. This is mostly for you. It's also for anybody who uh, manages my Wikipedia. I started at Smosh in March 2020 as the VP of Production and Operations. At the time, I had some HR responsibilities. That's where the joke of Lisa from HR came from. What? Those responsibilities were then handed off at the end of that year to an actual HR team. Uh, however, beginning this year, I've transitioned into that HR team. <laughs> I am now HR. For real. <laughs> I know I'm not in, in production anymore, but this should have been its own video. Uh, <laughs> because I'm now officially HR, it means I need to be more professional. I'm not going to disclose anything that Amanda said to me. Uh, it's not how I operate. That's not how I operate. Uh, but I am going to read her file from the last HR team. <laughs> in November of 2020, Amanda had a meeting with HR where she had to be reminded again, that tall people are not a protected class and she would have to use the same bathroom as everybody else. <laughs> we did, however, raise all the door frames 
to accommodate. <laughs> uh, in April of 2021, Amanda was called into HR because she was listing her characters as dependents on her taxes, <laughs> saying, I birthed them. I deserve this. <laughs> it's a valid argument. In October 2021, our shooting schedule was an hour behind because Amanda had to hug each and every crew member as soon as she walked in. <laughs> to be clear, these hugs last 10 seconds. There is back scratching and a little, you're amazing, in everybody's ear. In May of 2022, Amanda was caught stealing her Joan Rivers wig from the costume department. She said it was for, and I quote, normal stuff, definitely not weird sex stuff. <laughs> we all joke that Amanda's really tall. This is misleading because Amanda is not one tall woman. She's actually two adolescent twin boys stacked on top of each other. <laughs> Their names are Mikey and Liam Olson, and they also passed away. This is not the hardest thing I'm going to do. Between the studio teachers and the babysitters and the month that Mikey's voice changed, it's been really hard for everybody. <laughs> Amanda, you're gone. <laughs> Disappointment. <laughs> oh, now it's mm. filthy. Not in my scene. <laughs> What's up, Jagoffs? <laughs> As some of you may have guessed, I am Amanda's mother. <laughs> and I raised. Amanda and her better siblings in a town outside Boston. Go Sooks! Now I know that Amanda has never talked that much about her family in videos and you probably think it's because, you know, she's embarrassed of us, but really it's the opposite. We're embarrassed of her! Stomp! <laughs> Amanda. The runt of the family. <laughs> she was the smallest of all of her siblings, but despite that, had the biggest f***ing head. After I pushed that giant dome out of my vag, I was walking like a king crab for months. Stop. And also, what's with all these, all these characters, Amanda? Why are they all harsh? Mean women. Where did that come from? Uh, huh? Yeah, her favorite character as a child was a goblin who liked climbing furniture. She called it couchy. I called it a pain in my ass! Anyway, I know I'm supposed to share happy moments that I had with Amanda. It took me a long time to try to think of one, but I, I came up with one. After high school, Amanda got accepted to UMass Amherst, which meant she had to move out of my house. <laughs> uh, I'm happy she's not moving back in. So now I can finally turn her room into a shrine for the Patriots. Go Pats! <laughs> Stop! to piss so bad, Amanda. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure if anyone's on TikTok, but there have been recent sightings of giants. One of those giants is here today. The giant of stage and screen, Amanda Lee Hancanto. <laughs> Amanda was an extremely talented actor. She committed so hard to everything that she did, like pretending Smosh was worth her time. <laughs> yeah. Or that her dress in the astrology music video didn't make her want to kill herself. <laughs> <laughs> One of the last memories I have with Amanda is when she and I went on a double date together. I brought my boyfriend, a cartoon boy, and, <laughs> and Amanda brought her fiance, a literal yeti. <laughs> my boyfriend ate a swirly lollipop, her fiance ate the waitress, <laughs> and Amanda, she ate. <laughs> and now, on to something all of us seem to be running out of. 
the will. <laughs> Since Amanda is very aware of the economic climate, Shane will receive a loan to assist with the recession on his head. <laughs> Olivia will receive a cameo in the post credits of a Marvel movie since Olivia loves showing up late and being in movies for less than a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Do not be afraid. Chance will receive Amanda's thickest sunglasses to hide his biblically accurate eyes. <laughs> Ian will receive Amanda's inability to learn board games. Here's a board game. Hearing Ian talk about restaurants. <laughs> oh no, I've been doing this every time. <laughs> Angela will receive Amanda's anti-aging cream because similar to Amanda could either be 25 or 55, Angela could be 13 or a feral guinea pig. <laughs> Jesus. Amanda has asked Lisa, our HR person, to spare Tommy from any repercussions of being the office asshole. Amanda writes, quote, Lisa, please understand that it's not Tommy's fault that he chose a bit that works in every funeral. He is required to roast his beloved coworkers over and over again, and he often feels like he has to continuously up the ante. But Tommy loves his coworkers, his friends, and he would hate for them to think otherwise. With love, Amanda. Oh my God, Amanda. Thank you, you humongous bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda's honor. Grab the shoulder of the person nearest you. Make deep, deep eye contact and tell them that you love them. <laughs> As is customary in every funeral, if anyone objects to Amanda's death, please speak now. <laughs> oh. I'm Steph Barkley, that's Ed Steph Barkley, comedian, artist, designer, poet, director, biologist. What are we doing here? Oh, oh, that's right, my best friend. Amanda Lehan dash Canto. <laughs> Amanda used to draw a tarot card every day. I wonder if she saw this coming. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda and I have watched Practical Magic 2,406 times. She's even visited Whidbey Island where it was filmed and slept outside the house where the killing of Jimmy Angelo took place. <laughs> <laughs> we are both witches. <laughs> I will now perform a spell to bring her back to life. De te perdon te melatico. De perdon te melatico. Dang! <laughs> okay. <laughs> we shall proceed. Amanda always wanted a Viking Icelandic funeral. So I will now douse her in gasoline and shoot her with a flaming arrow <laughs> and push her out to sea. <laughs> Someone have any gasoline? Wet cop? Oh. Dang. Ooh. Dang. Ooh, shoot, that was my last match. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we shall proceed. <laughs> Amanda was my best friend. I loved her more than any of you all combined could ever love anything. <laughs> Amanda used to talk to trees, so now when I look at a tree, I will talk to Amanda. <laughs> Thank you. God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I do regret making introductions under such sorrowful circumstances. <laughs> My name is Benoit Blanc. Uh, some refer to me as the greatest detective in the world. That was, of course, before I met Ms. Christ over here. That might be an overestimation. Now, I was deeply saddened to hear that your dear friend, Ms. Kanto, 
was escorted abruptly to the great unknown. <laughs> the great unknown, of course, typically referring to the afterlife. But in this case, the great unknown being why she had her hair cut like a 13th century crusader. <laughs> <laughs> Now, much like when I discovered that Tommy was in a committed relationship, this might come as a bit of a shock. <laughs> but I have reason to believe that Amanda was murdered <gasps> by someone in this room, no less. <sighs> That's right. You see, Amanda met her untimely demise while doing Try Not To Laugh. She was there in the stool with water in her mouth, ready to chuckle. And the next, she's on the ground, dead as a bag of buttons. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the only explanation for something like that is that she was poisoned. Someone poisoned her water that she had taken a swig of a mere 30 seconds before. <laughs> but who would do such a thing? Sure, she might smell like shit, <laughs> look like shit and overall be a massive piece of shit, but none of those are reasons enough to murder. How would someone do this? My first inclination was Ian, our knight in shining smosh merch. <laughs> See, Ian wanted to fire Amanda after he found out he had mistakenly hired someone funnier than him. <laughs> a mistake he'd made 12 times before, but this was the final straw. <laughs> but Ian knew he couldn't fire her, not legally. So his only option might be murder. But no, it doesn't make sense. You see, in order to kill someone, Ian would have to plan something without five other people doing all the work for him. <laughs> now, of course, there's Chance. Maybe Chance murdered Amanda so that she would go to heaven and give him a great networking opportunity with God. <laughs> <laughs> it's unstable logic, but when it comes to Chance, you don't really think of stability. <laughs> Doesn't make a lick of sense. Which brings me to Olivia. Olivia has the cold, dead eyes of a killer or someone who's just vaguely not interested in you. <laughs> you see, the interesting thing about this poison that was used is it has to remain in a person's mouth for 30 seconds before going into effect which means someone would have to do a bit so confusing, no, so befuddling, that they guaranteed they wouldn't spit their water out. But unfortunately, this poison requires a lot of planning ahead, which is something Olivia has never done before. <laughs> How about Lisa? Lisa, after being promoted to HR, had many reasons for wanting to kill Amanda. Amanda being one giant walking, talking HR violation. <laughs> Maybe Amanda squeezed one too many arms and Lisa had enough. <laughs> you might think Lisa can't do something like that, but let me remind you that just because someone looks like a first grade teacher does not mean they're not capable of first degree murder. You get it. <laughs> Angela. See, I thought Angela could be a prime suspect, but on the day of Amanda's murder, Angela had been locked outside the building because security thought she was some sort of feral guinea pig. <laughs> what is happening? It's a crime so perfect you can wrap it up and tie it in a bow. Tommy bow! <laughs> Tommy's fully capable of murder. Oh, we all know this. But poison would not be his method. No. Tommy would have beaten her to death and then kept on going afterwards, just like his bit in these funerals. Uh, why would someone want to kill Amanda? She's perfect, like a ruby or jazz music. <laughs> I just clicked into place. It's been sitting right in front of us this whole time and at all the previous funerals. Who the hell is that guy? Mr. Saxman. You enjoy this, don't you? You murder because it's sport for you. You just like attending funerals. You're not some jazz musician. You are a certified monster. So I ask you once again, who the hell is that guy? <laughs> oh, he's got it. Oh my God. Oh, he's got it. Oh, no. oh, oh now he's not. What are you going to do? Hey, don't you do anything. He kissed the knife, and now he's walking away. Jeez. Oh, he's still... Well, Miss Crouch, it seems we solved the murder.
Oh. Hello. <laughs> oh, Hello. Oh, no. I want to touch your shoulder, but I can't. Stop. Mom. Stop. I love your hair. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thanks, guys. That was fucked up. <laughs> Ooh. But anyways, everyone told me that I have to roast you guys, which is very hard and fun. And I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> okay, guys. So, we all know I do characters. Um, but I'm trying to work on some impressions. So I figured I'd start with you guys. So I'm going to go over my, my prep work that I have. So here's my prep work of how I, I build an impression. Ian. So Ian, I would start by doing like, you know, like the before actor in a Prozac commercial, right? Like. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> and, then, and then I quickly put him in a social situation, but he talks to you like he's trapped in an elevator, even though he's not. He's not trapped, but he acts like it. Have you seen there's gonna be a new Love is Blind? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're using some of the old castmates. <laughs> RR was a good movie, saw it five times. Open the doors! <laughs> so that's Ian. Um, Olivia. Olivia's like the girl at brunch who hasn't talked for 20 minutes. Mm. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> and then suddenly she becomes possessed by an old witch. Yeah, it's napkin! Yeah. It's a fork! It's a fork! Film me. It's a fork! It's a fork! Is that good? <laughs> Wow. That's Olivia. Shane. Shane's like a dad at dinner. How's school? <laughs> How's everything going? Good. How's your boyfriend? Oh, we got engaged, Dad. Oh, shit. Very good. Awesome. Yeah, can I give you a hug? Oh, that, okay, that was unexpected. <laughs> oh, my God. And then when you put dad with his buddies, this is him. Fucking right! <laughs> <laughs> That's Shane. This is Chance. Chance is like, he's like your ride or die, right? Everything you say to him is important. Yes, you should. Do it. Do it now. I'll do it for you if you don't do it. Do it now. <laughs> do it. Chance, but there's also like this other side of him. It's like this networky side that people mention. Like, Chance will take you out to lunch because he heard you got in a car accident with the producer of NCIS. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's crazy. Your neck is all like, did you get his number? Do you have his number? <laughs> you should send him your headshot because, and you should send mine just to make it like look casual. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. I like it. Angela. Angela is like a 16-year-old Italian girl who just found out someone has a crush on her. Oh my God, tell me. Oh my God, tell me, tell me. Stop, I'm dying. Tell me, tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. <gasps> tell me. What? Tell me. Oh my god. Oh my god. Tell me. <laughs> and then when she finds out she's like a two year old at the zoo. <laughs> Tommy. Tommy has the personality of a mom talking on a landline with a very long cord. <laughs> Walking around the house cleaning and the court is just rapping and rapping. But she's talking to her neighbors about all the other neighbors. Oh my god, tell me about it. Do you seriously? Oh my god, did you see Matilda's house? It's yellow. I should paint a happy face on it. Oh no, seriously. <laughs> yes, I know. How did this happen? <laughs> and then act like that woman just found out that she didn't win the best mailbox on the street. No, that's fine. I don't care. I, don't care. I do not care. Oh, I do not care. I don't care. Who got it? Matilda? I will fucking burn her house down. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> oh, That's Tommy. Yeah. Woo! Lastly, Lisa. Lisa is sort of like the karate kid. <laughs> like, as a kid, she might have been more fragile, maybe got beat up once or twice. But then she goes to the mountains of Serbia to train with a sensei and gets, like, really good at fighting, like, swordplay, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and, like, jumping from, like, a rock to, like, another rock, like, in a position. And the sensei's like, you're ready. And then once she's mastered it, she goes back to her hometown to confront her bullies. But she's not going to fight them, because sensei won't allow it. Instead, she goes right up to them knowing deep down, at a moment's notice, she could f their shit up. She just goes, what's up? 
Okay, that's it. I love you all. Oh, yeah. Now I gotta die. Now I gotta die. <laughs> She died with her legs crossed. That's <laughs> 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 yeah, so good. Oh my that was god. So good. That was incredible. You're a genius.